Presley, the most publicized soldier since Napoleon, with girlfriend Priscilla Bolia to see him off, leaves Frankfurt at the end of his army career. So it's farewell to military service and 16-year-old Priscilla. What fate for that girl to have as a friend the emperor of rock and roll? At press week in Ayrshire, Scotland, on a fuel stopover to Fort Dix, New Jersey, the Scots fans are waiting for Elvis. Yeah, yeah, it's definite, I promise you. All the military planes that fly from Europe to America stop over to refuel here at Presswick. No, they haven't chartered a special flight for him. What? Local colour? Don't worry, Chief. You know me, I've got that organised already. I've arranged for Belinda Gavigan to meet me here. What? Yeah, that's her. Yeah. So you can set the headline now. It's, uh, local beauty, welcome... No, wait. Local celebrity welcomes Elvis to Scotland. Yeah, that's it. Well, I know you can't change the headline once it's set. Look, don't worry. I guarantee Elvis will be here within half an hour. Yes, I've organized a visitor's pass for Belinda. Cost me ten bob, by the way. Right. Great. I'll be in with the story in the pics in about an hour. More of them here than I anticipated, I must say. You said... You said nobody knew that he was coming, Ike. No, these things tend to spread. Can I trust them to keep their mouths shut anymore? No bottle of Johnny Walker, it cost me to find out Elvis was landing here today. Keep it in your cell, Ike, says my contact. Keep it in my cell. As well taking out a full-page advert in the Daily Sketch. Ike, hey, there's security. How are we going to get past the barrier into the transit lounge? You can't quite figure that one out yet, son. Don't worry. Want me some? Uh, you usually do. Have you got any Havana cigars, miss? Waiting for Elvis. Sorry? What was that? I just wondered if you were waiting for Elvis. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, I'm waiting for Elvis. <laughs> so am I. Is he uh, definitely coming then? Ah, uh, yes. Yes, I think that's for sure. Yes, he's definitely coming. I found out he was coming through my auntie Violet. She's the assistant manager in the canteen here. She heard the security men talking about it in their tea break. How did you find out? Is your mom one of the cleaners here or something? Ah, uh, no, no. It's part of my job to know these things. Are you one of the security men? Oh, God, man, auntie Violet will kill me for shopping. No, don't worry, I'm not security. I'm Robbie Simpson. Teen Beat. The Ayrshire Telegraph. I write the Teen Beat column. I'm Elaine Milne. Pleased to meet you. Yeah, likewise. Do you, uh... Do you read my column at all, Elaine? Not really, no. There's never enough about Elvis in it. But you see, Elaine, if I constantly wrote about Elvis, then somebody else would complain there wasn't enough about, say, Wee Willie Harris. I wouldn't complain if there was nothing about Wee Willie Harris. Well, there you are, you see. You can't please everybody. Neither can Wee Willie Harris. Do you want a jammy dodger? Um, no thanks. Um, American team soda? No, thanks all the same. Do you ever put stuff in your paper that people send in? Sometimes. Like what, for example? Poetry? Yes, we publish readers' poetry. Occasionally. I don't have poem about Elvis. Do you want to hear it? Um, sure, yeah. It's not very good, but maybe if you liked it, you could put it in your paper. Maybe. Bad. See, you'll not laugh, will you? No, of course not. Cross your heart? Cross my heart. Right. This is it. Oh, Elvis, love me tender. Just like that old hound dog. If you will be my teddy bear, all day will sit and snog. <coughs> See? I knew you'd laugh. No, no, it's a smoker's cough. See? <coughs> Please carry on. Okay. Well... The blue moon of Kentucky shines down in Heartbreak Hotel where I wire brush your blue suede shoes. Oh, Elvis, don't be cruel. That's it. Oh, sorry. I didn't realize you'd finished. We well, have. What do you think? It's, uh, very, um... Rotten. Very rotten. I know. Still, 
I'm going to give it to Elvis to take back to America with him. Oh, I wouldn't say heart on that if I was you. You see, he'll only be allowed into the transit lounge because he's, well, in transit. Only visitors with special permission are entitled to enter the transit lounge. Have you got special permission? Press pass. Gets you in most places. Plus permission to escort one visitor. Can you get me in then? Sorry, no, I can't. The permit's for Belinda Gavigan. She a bird? She's the Ayrshire and District Cattle Breeders Association, Miss Dairy Queen of 1959. Is that right? Where is she? What? The Dairy Queen. It's getting late. Maybe she can't make it. Oh, she'll turn up, all right. She has to. She's probably just doing her makeup or something. Stuart Donaldson, that is enough. The state of me. Look, my makeup's ruined. I have to do it all over again. You're right, Scanner, so you are. Glinda, I'll ask you one more time. Please don't do this. Why shouldn't I? Because it's not dignified. Not dignified? I like that and I don't think. What could be more dignified than getting my photograph taken with Elvis Presley? I'll tell you, not getting your photo taken with Elvis Presley. Look, Belinda, if you're going to become my fiancé, well, there'll have to be some changes made. Oh, yeah? Such as? Such as not arranging to meet strange men at Presswick Airport in the middle of the flaming night. Elvis Presley is not a strange man, Struan. Don't be deliberately obtuse, Belinda. You know, fine, that's not who I meant. Oh, do I? Yes, you... Yes, you do. I mean, some lecherous twerp of a journalist who wants a picture of you in your undergarment so him and his vile pals can leer at it when they pin it up in their grubby little office. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if they pinned it oh, up in... Oh, go on, Struan, you can say it. Washroom, Belinda. Oh, heavens, wouldn't that be simply awful? What would Mummy and Daddy say then? I'm sure you're aware my parents are hardly pleased about our future plans. Oh, really? I wonder if I could see my breath every time we walked into the line. I can't help what they think. This is hardly going to soften their attitude towards you if you carry on with this vulgarity in public. Is that what it seems to you, Stu? Vulgarity? Yes. Well, let me tell you something. All my life I've wanted to be somebody. Well, I can't sing or dance, and I wasn't born with an awful lot of brains. But I was lucky enough that when I grew up, I grew out as well. I don't... Just a minute, Stu, let me finish. I work hard to make the best of myself. I squeeze myself into daft outfits and periwinkle shoes so I get noticed. And it works. I get praised, and I get flattered, and sometimes I get hated. My parents are proud of me. And you know something else? So am I. I don't do anything I'm ashamed of. I know that. Well, so why are you ashamed of me, Struan? Listen, Struan, I love you. <laughs> I really do. And when we get married, I'll stop this beauty queen stuff and settle down and be a good wife and mother. But can't you understand? This is my time to shine. It'll never happen again. We don't get too many middle-aged mystery queens, you know. I get a kiss before I go. Will you pick me up later? I'll get a taxi home then. Oh, and don't worry. I'll try not to be too vulgar in public. Oh, Mother Mike, will you speed it up? He always should be here any minute. Sorry, Ike. It's just taking me longer than I thought. Did you know I'd done it before we left the house? I didn't want to get my shoes all wet. They look horrible if they're soaking. Just get a chill deal in, will you? Oh, I can smell it, Fergie. I can smell it. Money, Fergie. Hunters and hunters of money. Oh. I'm telling you, Fergie. Man, she always hears that song of yours, we are made for life. Sorry, up. Chase into that rig out. Don't want to keep the guy waiting. You can't feel daft getting dressed up like this. Could we not just made a wee demo record and sent it to Colonel Parker? Not at all. You see what I mean? This is how come you need me to look after your career. You want flair. You want style. You want charisma. I want to get home. Now, don't back down now, kid. This wee notion of mine will change your life, but permanently. Okay. If we had made a demo and sent it to Elvis' manager, I mean, who knows where he'd ever get to hear it? This way, you get right to the source. Dress up as a big Scottish rock star and meet the king. If he recognises you as an equal, you chat about this and that, things like the weather. How do you like Scotland so far? How do you think a Cadillac compares with a Ford console? He gets warmed up. And you say, Oh, by the way, El. No, no, don't get too familiar too soon. Just, oh, by the way, Elvis. I was just wondering whether you were scouting around for any new songs, like. I'm always on the lookout for new songs, Fergie, he says. 
Oh, is that a fact tale? Says you. Uh, it'd be okay to call a mail at that point. Oh, is that a fact tale? Because it just so happens that I've got a dandy wee number that I've wrote myself. Then you play the first few chords on the guitar, and the place goes quiet. Mm. Everybody stops with their dainty list. When you've finished, Elvis is in tears. I can't take that song away for you, Fergie, he says. I insist, Elvis, says you. Quietly, but firmly. To see my manager hear about the details, and the song is yours. Bingo! I'm in there with a contract, and we are off and running. Easy street, here we come. You get the picture? Oh, I get the picture, all right. But it's more like one of Norman Wisdom's pictures than one of Elvis's. Trust me, Fergie. Anyway, how are we doing? You ready for a big time? Ready as I'll ever be. Hey, less of a deco, then. Oh, sensational, son. Sensational. You look like a million dollars, kid. A million dollars. How do you feel? Well, at 39 and 11. VOAC regrets the delay of flight. Team Beat, I'm glad you could make it. It's just started to pelt down outside. Hope Elvis' flight doesn't get delayed. I promised my mum we'd be back in about an hour. No, I don't think there's any problems. Um, can I get you a coffee or something while we're waiting? That'd be lovely. Just black, one sugar. No milk. Never touch the stuff. Those dirty blotches. Can I quote you on that, Miss Dairy Queen of 1959? Don't you dare. Okay, let's find you a seat. Could you get um, me one as well, please? Milk and three and a half sugars, if that's all right. Three and a half sugars? Yeah, I'm trying to cut down. Right. Uh, Belinda, this is Elaine. Okay, let's find a seat then, Elaine. Are you a friend of Robbie's, Elaine? Not really, no. I just get talking to him. Do you think that was a bit cheeky? What? Asking him to get me a coffee? No. Let's sit down here. I'm sure he was just about to ask if you wanted one anyway. Aye, likely. Which one of Elsie's pictures do you think's the best? I like King Creole. Well, they all seem much the same to me, really. Oh dear, that sounds a bit awful, doesn't it? See, the truth is, I'm not really too much of an Elvis fan, I'm afraid. Are you not? But I thought you were supposed to be meeting him and saying welcome to Scotland and that. Aye. But it's just another job to me. A job? Some job getting to meet Elvis Presley. I'd love to meet him. Well, you'll meet him tonight, won't you? No, I don't think so. I'll be lucky if I get to see him. Robbie says you have to have a special pass to meet him. It's a pity. Fuck, it doesn't matter. I knew something wouldn't work. Nothing really nice ever happens to me. All right, this isn't going to work. I feel like I'm doing this gate up. I can't get through there. Can I just relax, son? Look, I realise you have to be sensitive to be a soulmate. I mean, there is a limit, you know? What? Have a drink. <laughs> Uh, seat's taken. <coughs> you, you can be so sensitive as you like. When you're sitting there in a the big bungalow that you've bought with all the royalties, once they always have recorded your number. In the meantime, you're just going to have to learn to push yourself. With my help, of course. Uh, two minutes, Julep, sir, please, square. Hey, hey, what, what's the rush? There we are, ladies. Just help yourselves. Yep. Now, we'd better get down to business. Do you have to change or anything, Belinda? No. I've got my outfit on underneath my coat. Uh. Do you want to have a wee look at it? Uh, yes. Let's just have a quick flash. How's that? Sensational. <laughs> don't forget to tell her what the song's called. It's Belinda. I know it's Belinda, you don't have to tell me. No, no, I, it really is Belinda. Maybe I should get back out and bowl and come out again. Look, Belinda Gavigan. Belinda Gavigan? Is that a fact? Fancy her being here. Who's Belinda Gavigan? Ayrshire and District Cattle Breeders Association, Miss Dairy Queen of 1959. Get away. Anyway, look, do you want me to get back to her then? Oh, Belinda. Aye. 
She's my inspiration. I saw a picture in the paper one day and I thought she was the loveliest thing that I'd ever seen. I sat down and wrote my song in about ten minutes with her picture propped up in front of me. Yeah, I wonder what she's doing here. I'm not sure if I wait to find out. Let's go and ask her. No, I don't. I don't want her to see me dressed like this. Come on. I think if we keep the sash on for the first few pictures, then maybe lose it for the second one. Oh, no, half. there's a coincidence and a half. Then all right, Fergie. Yeah. Belinda Gavigan. Unless I'm very much mistaken. That's right. Uh... Ike Morrison, personal management. And this is my client, Fergus Macaulay. Say hello, Fergus. Oh, yeah. Pleased to meet you. Uh, this is Robbie Simpson from the Ayrshire Telegraph. Oh, don't believe her. Not the Robbie Simpson. Teen B. Well, yes, actually. A great caller. Really in-depth stuff, wouldn't you, Mister? Really? Oh. Did that, that piece you did about uh, Will Clough ever meet the right girl? Fantastic. Great journalist. Thanks a lot. Don't mention it. Are you two waiting for Elvis as well? Oh, well, we've got something to be a bit special for a man, you know. Take it you're here in business the same as myself, right? Uh, right. Well, I just might have the kind of story that your column's looking for. Uh huh. What would you say if I tell you that Elvis's next single had been written by a local boy? Are you serious? Absolutely. And not only that, but it was inspired by the very lovely lady sitting over there. Who, me? I mean, of course, Miss Gavigan. All right, can we know oh, just... And here's the very lad that wrote it. Mr. Humility himself. Is that true? Did I really inspire you to write a song? Oh, uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah, so what I was wondering was, maybe you and I could do each other a mutual favour sort of style. I give you the exclusive rights to the story, and you give my lad here a hefty dollar publicity. No. No, 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 no. I know what you hard-nosed day supporters are like. <laughs> Want a wee rendition, huh? A wee sneak preview. Okay, Scoop. It's a song you want, it's a song you'll get. Listen, oh, this is not... Oh, I'd love to hear it. Please. We've got time enough before Elvis's flight arrives. Oh, wow. Ace Sir Bernie. Right. You get ready to get the business with the brownie, and I'll make sure the teen idol's in the right key. No, it's no, it's a nightmare. I can't sing my song to her. She'll laugh at me. That's awesome. She'll love it. Women don't get songs written about them every day. She will fall at your feet. This is... Uh... Oh. This is... Uh... This is... Uh... Oh, this is out of tune. Come here. Look, listen, son. Try to imagine it's one of the pictures you watch all the time. Right? You're Troy Donahue, and she's Sandra D. You're just about to sing to her, and everything goes misty. A backing band starts playing out of nowhere, and your voice sounds like you're singing up a close. Just use your imagination.
don't even think about it. So this is you not being vulgar in public, is it? Mr. Lowe, I was just... I know what you were just doing. I saw you. And so did everyone else in that flaming airport. Well, you can put your coat back on and get in the car right now. You're going home. Well, now, wait a minute. Listen. You listen, you little creep. And think yourself lucky I don't wrap that camera of yours around your slimy little neck. And as for you, if you so much as look at my girlfriend again, I'll flatten you. I'd like to see you try a big mouth. Oh, would you? You rat, Stuart. You, get in the car. Now. All right. I will. If only to stop you making any more of a fool of yourself. I think it's best if I just go. That's the nicest thing anyone's ever done for me. I'm sorry. Really sorry. Come on. You all right, Fergie? Yeah, no thanks to you. What did you have to go and say a thing like that for? <laughs> did I know the guy was a psycho. Oh, oh. get on, get on, get on. Oh, no. I got us an approval for beggars. This is going to cost me a fortune. This is going to cost me my job. Oh, come. The headline's set and ready to roll for the morning edition. Local celebrity welcomes Elvis to Scotland. So what's the problem? What's the problem? Thanks to your bright idea, the local celebrity's just bamoosed. That's the problem. No problem, eh, old pal? Listen, fate, in the shape of your uncle Ike here, has just presented you with a brand new local celebrity. Me? What? No. <laughs> it's perfect. Fergie here has got to be the biggest local celebrity since Rabbi Burns. And this is your opportunity to get on the ground floor. You do us a favour, we do you one. Well, you need a local celebrity, right? I need to get Fergie through the transit barrier. What do you say? Aww. Never mind what he says, I, I say no. Oh. This is a godsend. If this is your chance to hit the big time, grab it while it's gone. The only thing that's gone here is me. I've had it with your dopey schemes. Dopey schemes? All of them, Ike. The law. Like the one for faking undiscovered poems of Robert Burns to the one about the musical hula hoops. They're all just dreams, like, and I've finally woken up. You've got your guitar, your glasses, and there's your jacket. I'll send your trousers and shoes in the post. This has been the worst night of my life. Well, that's that. I might as well go home myself. How? I've blown the assignment. Just because you need a celebrity? Exactly. Does it have to be a famous celebrity? Hmm? Well, wouldn't someone that drew a poem for Elvis be a kind of celebrity? Love me tender, just like that old hound dog. If you will be my teddy bear, all day we'll sit and snog. The blue moon of Kentucky shines down in Heartbreak Hotel, where I wire brush your blue suede shoes. Oh, Elvis, don't be cruel. for sites film for this Easter weekend.